So before we dive into our service this morning, um, I just wanted to share a few notices with you all. So number one, if you'd like to go on a walk, um, then do come along to church from Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. There'll be someone at church who um, can go on a walk with you, a socially distanced walk, of course. Uh, Number two, Young people out there, do come and join us every Thursday at 7.30pm for our youth socials. It would be really good to have you there. It's great fun. And number three, we're continuing on with our John series, which is happening uh, every Thursday at 8 p.m. So come along to that too, as we explore the book of John together. And lastly, on the 7th of February at 2 p.m., we will be having our church members meeting, which is happening on Zoom. So do come along to that as well. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like to go through, do get into contact with us and we'll go through that with you. 
So this week we're continuing on with our series of exploring and listening to our church members uh, sharing Bible verses and passages that have helped them during this time um, of COVID. Hi, um, I'm going to read from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with the thanksgiving, let your requests be made new to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. I go back to this often because I am a warrior. Um, and not in the good prayer warrior kind of way that I want to be. Um, often in the anxious way. Um, and it's usually brought on by work stress, feeding out of my depth, uh, feeling like the workload is insurmountable. Um, and therefore I lose peace and um, just feel disarmed, a little bit paralysed. The world would have you believe that worry is going to get you up off your backside and um, just get to it, just do it. But it doesn't work that way for me. I think a lot of people would relate to that as well. Um, but the antidote to worry is right here. It is prayer. Um, and it can feel passive. And the world will also tell you the lie that prayer is a passive thing. Um, it's just talking to the wind. It's unproductive. Um, but it's quite the opposite. Because we are waging a spiritual battle. Um, we are setting our minds on the things above. Um, on the God who can control the outcome. Um, and do the things that we cannot. So it takes our attention off of us and puts it on uh, on God, who it should be on. Um, it also reminds me of Matthew chapter 6, 33. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the rest, all the necessities will be added to us. Um, our future is in God's hands, and he releases it to, it, to us day by day. Um, so we should just live in the now, trying to sow good seeds, stewarding, um, this time as well as we can um, and not waste any energy on the things that are unproductive like worry. It also tests, um, tells us that we should be thankful, we should pray with thanksgiving. Um, when there is a cloud hanging over us making us anxious it can feel like there's not much to be thankful for but there are loads um, <laughs> and it's listed in 8 to 9 and it says, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, is pure, lovely, commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and Paul, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Um, well, we can see that if we're told to um, practice the things that Paul practised, well, he practised lots of thanksgiving. He even referred himself to uh, um, as a prisoner for God while he was in prison. Um, he was the prisoner of um, the Roman Empire, <laughs> but he referred him to, to himself as the prisoner for God. Um, he committed that time to God. He practiced the things of God. He wrote letters encouraging the churches. These are things we can do. Um, and especially a little like Paul, they were not in prison. We are in lockdown and there's not much else happening there are no events this is a good time um to store up those treasures in heaven start training ourselves up um to be trusting god worry less and run to prayer um quicker uh, next time that we struggle than worry um and god is all these things as well that are listed in verse 8 he is true he's honorable just pure lovely and commendable he's trustworthy it can feel trust can feel like something quite abstract when we're worrying um can feel like some kind of emotion that we have to conjure up from nowhere just really work on focus hard on but it's not um prayer is an act of trust and in through prayer we are confiding in we are putting our confidence in we are depending on um the god who tells us to cast our cares upon him and who won't leave us who promises not to leave us he's consistent um, he's trustworthy, and these are all things to be thankful for, like Philippians 4 tells us to be. Um, and Amy Young says it quite well as well. She says, trust is like a staff you can lean on as you journey uphill with me, with God. Um, 
If you are trusting in God consistently, the staff will bear as much of your weight as needed. Lean on and trust on God, uh, trust in God. That is quite similar to what Proverbs 5, um, 3, 5 instructs us to be. Um, it says, lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him. Um, so he will make, for he will make your path straight. God is the one who can ultimately work out the outcome um, and therefore we have no business wasting energy worrying um, and that is quite encouraging it's reassuring to know that God the God who's consistent who's already there in the future uh, is handling it uh, and is on our side um, like she says he's the staff that we can lean on she also says that um, each day of life is a glorious gift but so few people know how to live within the confines of today. Much of their energy for abundant living spills over the timeline into tomorrow's worries or past regrets. Their remaining energy is sufficient only for limping through the day, not for living it to the full. So let us not be like that. Um, and let's, um, God, train us, train us up to keep our focus on his presence um, in the present um, so that we can receive the abundant life uh, which flows freely from um, his throne, from his throne of grace and from God, living with God, walking with God, uh, praying and having that attitude of thanksgiving. I hope that encourages you. Um, bye. <laughs> morning, church. Good morning, church. When I was little, growing up in Africa, um, we were made to memorise this Bible chapter. Not a verse, but the whole chapter. Um, I wasn't happy about it then, but this chapter has since saved me countless of times. Um, this is our family prayer for protection. Um, it is God's promise to protect us, which is declared in Psalms 91. So, Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to, of the Lord... He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalms 91 is God's answer to the prayer in Psalms 90. Um, at present, it feels like things are falling apart around us. Uh, we're losing loved ones. We're in despair. We doubt um, whether Christ is still there. Um, going into the new year, we placed all our hopes on the new vaccine. We wished and prayed that soon everything will actually go back to normal. We're now facing with more strains of the virus. Our faith is tested. We are in the pits of it, of the whole issue. Um, when we are at our lowest, we are consumed by fear. As Christians, we're told over and over again that if we trust God by faith, he will take care of us. Sometimes we don't see or feel that God is taking care of us. A friend said, said to me yesterday, um, Chi, why do bad things always happen to me? Bad things happen to all of us. I said to her, the world is full of suffering. There is no guarantee that bad things will not happen to us. Deliverance will come. We just have to have patience. Deliverance will come, but on God's time. I believe and I tell my children that we are meant to learn something in every problem we face. That until we learn from it, we cannot grow within ourselves. Christ provides peace and protection that helps us get through difficult times. So, the verse that I read refers to being in the shadow of the most high. To be in someone's shadow, there's nothing like personal space. You have to stay very close to them. This is the time to remember that God is your refuge and comfort, in whom you should have absolute trust. True peace and comfort comes only from being close to God. So keep reading the Bible. Be faithful in prayer. Love and care for one another so that we can stay in God's shadow forever. Amen. Hiya, um, I'm Kayara, or Chaska, you might know me by. 
if we haven't had the chance to meet before, then hi, thanks very much for letting me into your home this Sunday morning. If we have met before, then hello, it's been a while. Um, whoever you are, wherever you are, I, I hope you're well. The verse that I want to share today is from Esther chapter four, and it goes, perhaps you were born for such a time as this. But let me read the full passage first before I continue. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Perhaps we were born for such a time as this. Perhaps we were placed where we were for such a time as this. Is that true? I don't know. We don't know. Uh, Mordecai in the passage suggests as much to Esther. Um, maybe we'll never know if we were placed here for such a time as this. Maybe we will. We do know that God's plan is perfect, although it can feel incredibly difficult to see that, to know that, even to say that when we encounter times such as we are living through today. I find this passage uh, a great comfort and a great relief because it's talking about a time of similar levels of difficulty. Um, it's talking about, in fact, perhaps heightened levels of difficulty than those we live through today. It's talking about a very serious uh, threat, mortal threat of persecution of the Jewish people. Um, and Mordecai, Esther's older relation, is telling her that she has a duty to speak up on behalf of those being persecuted. And Mordecai says that there is certainly relief and deliverance for the Jewish people. The idea that there is always hope, always relief, always deliverance for those who are in need and for those who, who are, are God's people, who God protects. Mordecai also tells Esther that it is her duty to help those people. Uh, there is a certain relief, a certain deliverance, a certain hope for those who are in need. Uh, we are told this again and again throughout the Bible. We're also told that it is our duty to help those who are in need. There's a prayer that I have had hung on my wall for several years and it's been jumping out a lot at me recently and I think it addresses this topic in a very succinct, very concise um, and rather beautiful way. Um, this is what's hung on my wall. It's a Latin American prayer and it goes as follows. Lord, to those who are hungry, give bread. And to those who have bread, give a hunger for justice. Perhaps we were created for such a time as this. As much as we might want to escape the situation that we're in, as much as we might want COVID to be over and to be able to see our friends again, uh, hug our family again, and just you know go to the supermarket without a mask on again. We know that that will pass. We know that COVID will pass, uh, although it can feel like it is never going to end at this point. We were always promised that difficult times will end. That is the nature of time. That is the nature of, of everything. Everything passes. Um, that's something we can be certain of. But right now, we are in the middle of it. And there are jobs to be done. And there is justice for us to seek. And it is our duty, regardless of the fact that things will surely pass, regardless of the fact that 
it doesn't matter whether it is us or someone else who speaks up and changes whatever it is that needs to change or does whatever it is, whatever it is that needs to be done, whether that's working on a COVID ward or fighting for justice for, for somebody whose voice isn't being heard. Um, that work will get done, but it's still our duty to do it, even knowing that it will get done regardless. Uh, <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I am. Um, yeah. Um, But what does that look like? What is seeking justice for those who have no bread? What does speaking up for those who are persecuted? What does being born for such a time as this look like? Well, I have no idea what that looks like for you. Um, I barely know what that looks like for me most of the time. I know that I jump into projects uh, which seem to be justice focused and I get going with issues that I see in front of me. Um, is that the best tactic? <laughs> not necessarily. Um, it's certainly not always the most strategic. Uh, I do know that getting stuck in on these projects, um, for me, that's kind of working with charities and kind of having having websites going and writing things because I, I can write <laughs> reasonably or write, or so I'm told. Um, I know that doing those things and that in seeking to bring that little piece of, of justice or relief that I can to the world definitely brings me a sense of peace. Um, and it helps me to contemplate on my place in this world and my relationship to God and my my purpose in being placed on this earth um, and being being a Christian and following Christian mission, doing those things can can bring great clarity uh, to all of that. And I know that I find a sense of prayer in doing that and getting stuck in on hard work um, because I'm not <laughs> as good at the sitting down, being silent, uh, praying in a traditional sense most of the time I get distracted and I <laughs> want to wonder and it's uh it's not best but I I know that when I I do actions and I find things to to focus my actions on uh that I find a real sense of purpose um but that's just my experience um someone who is very much happy to raise their hand and say that they are muddling through life making it up um praying the prayer of wanting to seek justice and uh to to serve others uh in the best way that i can perhaps we are born for such a time as this perhaps it is our duty to speak out and to to seek justice. I think there's some comfort in thinking that we were placed where we are at the time we're in for a purpose and that that purpose is, is not inward looking, it's not self-serving, it's not got anything to do with us but that in doing the work that needs to be done, in, in seeking justice, in whatever way that looks like for you, big, small, in between, in doing that, there is peace to be found and there is relief to be found for ourselves. Um, yeah, maybe, perhaps. You are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down. All through the storm. Peace. Mm -hmm.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the verses and the passages that were shared this morning. And Father, I pray that over the coming week, you will help us reflect on your goodness, on your mercies every day of our lives. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue to uh, guide us this week, continue to listen to you, listen to the voice of the Lord, and to live a life that is directed by your spirit. Father, we commit this week into your hands, we will commit our plans and our desires and we pray, Lord, that your will will be done. Father, protect us, help us to continue to share your love, continue to share your light with others too, Lord, especially during this time, Lord. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope uh, this service has blessed you and we hope to see you next week. Bye.